Gangishan Good evening. <laughs> so we are thinking about Guru Rumbuche. <laughs> Guru Rumbuche is a Buddha of Tantrayana, an ordinary person, I don't think able to speak about Guru Rinpoche that much. <laughs> uh, we just know very little about the Guru Rinpoche. Uh, it says there yeah, are more than ten of thousands Gurumbuches by coffee, you know, we even cannot count how much of we 
are not able to even just remember the, the title of the Guru Mbache's biography. You know? So it's very vast, deep. But it is good if we know a little bit <laughs> how much we can understand. Huh? Uh, even it is Guru Mbache's life history. It is trying to understand the Dharma and I think this also includes in practice of the Dharma. So according Mahayana then it is very important huh? in the beginning trying to generate the Bodhicitta and during the actual course no matter you are listening contemplating or or meditating uh, trying to think about the view of the emptiness which is not that easy <laughs> uh, even though you are not able to have real view of the emptiness but if you have a less negative emotions, then it is like a, a close to the view of the emptiness, you know, uh, not having much five poisons such as like desire, anger, ignorance and so forth. Then at the end of the practice, dedication also very important, huh? as uh, Omniscient Long Chamber said, uh, beginning generating bodhicitta and during the actual course, uh, mikpa mepa, without any clinging or attachment, and then after, if you dedicate the merits, then that will be the, the merits which is the causes of the Buddhahood. If we miss one of them, threefold practice, then it will be married, but it won't be the causes of the Buddhahood. Huh? So it is very important to have a right motivation or attitude in the beginning. Like when we were starting in the Shedda, you know, we go to every day like two or three different classes. In the beginning, every single class, <laughs> Kempo or Lobin explain 10 to 15 minutes, you know, how to uh, change the motivation, attitude, you know, every day, listening this three to four times a day. Huh? <laughs> but I think that's important why we are just not trying to understand some knowledge, you know. We are trying to understand Dharma and we are trying to accumulate the merits. So I think that's important. If we don't have right motivation or right conduct, then we listen the Dharma, contemplate or chanting prayers. We may not have uh, the accumulation of the merit, how much we supposed to have, you know, because we have not uh, doing properly like like in one teaching, let's say there are 20 people, this all 20 people will spend similar kind of time, two hours or three hours, you know, one hour. But accumulation of the merit will not be the same. Huh? Even they spend same amount of time, Accumulation may, may have different, you know, some has more merit and some have less merit because of their motivation and attitude or they apply right conduct or not, you know. So I think that's why in the beginning of the teachings, all the teachers explain 
10, 15 minutes only. Uh, in Tibetan we say, Kun Long Chepa, Kun Long Chepa. Trying to generate right attitude or motivation because we are trying to accumulate the merits and trying to purify our negative karmas. So that's why I think always speak <laughs> motivation and conduct in the beginning, you know. Sometimes, like when I was studying, oh, I heard so many times why it is <laughs> explaining time and again. Because we sometimes forget, huh? Oh, he goes to class, I should go, you know. <laughs> but why I'm going? <laughs> Maybe, I don't know. <laughs> he goes or she goes, I should go, you know. <laughs> so preparation. When I came last time in New York, Kenjin Sultim Lodurumbuche, you know, one of the famous teachers now from Tibet, a uh, student of His Holiness, late Kenjin Jingme Pinso, Kenjin Sultim Lodu, and Ken, Kenjin Sotarki. So I went to listen to his teachings uh, one time in Tibet house, another time in Sherpa Gomba, Sherpa Monastery. Um, so he was telling about this, you know, like, uh, oh, they request him to teach Dharma, but he was just giving kind of like advice, you know. He was telling that, I'm not teaching today, I'm just talking to you guys, you know. If you really need to receive teachings, maybe I will see in the later, in the future, if I come. Today I just want to spend a little time with you guys, you know. Then he was telling us, like, in our Tibetan culture, you know, oh, tomorrow we have puja. Then we talk, oh, we need to prepare, you know, preparation. So what preparation then they do? Oh, to make torma, you know, how much samba we use, you know, <laughs> and what kind of food we serve to the lamas, you know, how much offerings we give, you know. They are preparing, uh, preparing like, that one, you know. And he said, that's not the real preparation for the Dharma. That's the like second step, you know. First, you need to think why you want to make puja, you know. In the beginning, why? Why you are going to request Lamas to perform the pujas, you know. You have right attitude or motivation, you know. Why? Why you want to make, you know? Oh, I don't have good business, you know? So I may have better business, so I will invite lamas, request the pujas, you know? Then that's not the right way to preparing or thinking, huh? Or, oh, I'm sick, you know, so I need to request the pujas so I get well. So he says that's not the... Uh, First preparation, you know, he says, first preparation is you need to think Dharma way, you know. Like, no matter I make pujas, requesting lamas, inviting lamas. So, first you need to think this uh, according to the bodhicitta, you know thinking all mother sentient beings and benefit for them, I will make this kind of like puja. Then the second preparation, you know, how many lamas invite, what kind of food will offer them, that second preparation is that. So most of the time we make mistake preparation, you know, means not right motivation or attitude. So cannot have enough amount of the accumulation of the merit. So that's really true, you know. <laughs> Most of the time we say, oh, how many lama, in which room, what breakfast, what lunch, you know, we just confuse with them, you know. Why we are asking this puja, we forgot, you know. Then 
Jora Semgi Tambalike, the preparation beginning generating the bodhicitta is lost. <laughs> so I think quite important that uh, <clears throat> how he said, you know. So we, even we are trying to understand the life story of the Guru Rinpoche also, it's a part of the Dharma, so it's very important to have <laughs> positive thinking. Um, so, Guru Rinpoche's life story, <laughs> as I said, like more than 10,000 biography. We even don't know about the title of those texts. We just know very little where he was born, how he was born, where he uh, practiced, and where he taught, where did he travel, you know, very little. Uh, like in this good area, you know, Batrakalpa. We know that there will be thousand Buddha. Uh, supreme manifestation Buddhas, thousand, you know, like Shakyamuni Buddha is fourth. So in this good time, there will be like thousand Buddha, like a Shakyamuni Buddha. Supreme manifestation Buddha, you know. There are many different levels of Buddha, you know, like Dhammakaya, Sambhogakaya, Nirmanakaya. So what we are talking about, the thousand Buddha is a supreme manifestation body, like a Shakyamuni Buddha. So there will be like a thousand. And similarly, there will be thousand Guru Mbuches. During the each Buddha time, there will be one main Guru Mbuche. Uh, to teach the Vajrayana teachings, I think. That's what uh, we know, like a Shakyamuni Buddha. Likewise, this time, a Padmasambhava is a main. Then there are so many manifestations, uh, like a uh, common way we say, like Guru Tsenke, eight different names of Guru Mbuche, you know, uh, manifested different forms for different purpose. But there are many, many different Guru Mbuches, you know. Padmasambhava's manifestation, uh, Guru Mbuches like reincarnation. Uh, it's a countless. Um, like sutras, Buddha, will be thousand, huh? like a Shakyamuni Buddha, supreme manifestation body. And similarly, thousand Gurumbuches will come in this good air, Bhatra Kalpa, to try the will of the Dharma of the Vajrayana. So we even <laughs> can read the name of those thousands. And the main Dharma teachings, Teza teachings, explain that Grumbuche was born miraculously. Some Kama teachings, Kama teaching means, you know, like we Nyingma teachings divided into three divisions, subdivisions, like a uh, long transmission Buddha's teaching from Buddha to present teachers, teacher to student, you know, continuously, unbrokenly coming lineage, such as like um, Panchaparamita, 16 volumes, or Canon, you know, is a long transmission of the Buddha's teaching. And 
short lineage of the Tezer teachings, you know, Tezer teachings. So Tezer teachings explained Guru Mbuche was born miraculously. As we talked yesterday that from the Amitabha Buddha's hand, from the uh, Amitabha's pure line, Sukhavati, blissful pure line, you know, uh, read it, nine peaks verger, marked with the letter syllable, whom and landed on the lotus flower, transformed into eight years of the age of Guru Rinpoche. So miraculously born. That's why Guru Rinpoche is a heart emanation of the Amitabha Buddha, speech emanation of the Avalokiteshwara. This all explained in treasure teachings, Dharma teachings which is short lineage. Buddha's teachings, why we talked long lineage, is from teacher to student, unbrokenly has to come the lineage, you know, explaining and listening. But Teresa teachings, um, Guru Mbuchi teaches Mandarawa right down in the Dakini's language in yellow scroll paper and put in the rock or river or in the sky, somewhere in the temple, somewhere in the statue. Then later, Guru Mbuchi's reincarnation, treasure teachings will discover and translate into Tibetan language, you know. So from Guru Mbuchi to Ishi Chokyal, and Ishi Chokyal to treasure reveler teacher, maybe 400 years, 500 years, the lineage jump, you know, like from Ishisokyal to Tezo Reveler. So for 500 years, there's no lineage master. So that's why it's a short lineage. So all Therma teachings, Tezo teachings explain Guru Mbuche was born miraculously. But some Kama, Kama is like, uh, long lineage Buddha's teaching, maybe very minor, few places. It says Guru Mbuche was um, the prince of the king of Odiana, you know, has father and mother, but that's very minor. Um, one Tibetan master also explained that way that Guru Mbuchi has father and mother, but that's not the majority Tezo teaching says that. And third, like, uh, profound, uh, pure vision lineage. All the Nyingma teachers, teachings have to uh, categorize within this one lineage. If there is not exist, then this is not the Nyingma teachings. Okay, all the Nyingma teachings has to within one lineage. Then third one is Samutang uh, Nangyipa. Uh, uh, from pure vision lineage, it's not like coming from teachers to students uh, and not like discovering from rock or rivers, you know. That's when the realized master in meditation, then in their wisdom, the teaching appears, you know, and they write down, you know. But that's according to Buddha's teaching. It will not be something completely other than Buddha's teaching, you know. Then it will, it will not be the uh, Buddha Dharma, yeah. We have this kind of three lineages. Among these three, the, all the Therma teachings explain Guru Mbuchi is miraculously born. Uh, we talked a little bit yesterday about that. And then how Guru Mbuchi came into publicly, you know, to know there is a, such kind of Guru. King Indra Bodhi, King of Odiana, uh, 
doesn't have the sun. You know, he has everything, no sun. So he was feeling sad, you know, there is no successor. Yeah? <laughs> After him, maybe kingdom will get in trouble, no son, no prince, no next king. Then he asked many Indian sadhu, you know, Hindu teachers, you know, how I can have son. Then uh, sadhu give him prediction that you need to practice a lot of generosity, then you may have the son. Then King Indarbodhi keep everything away, you know, for the poor people wishing to have son. So, uh, he has nothing left. Give away everything and no son is still. <laughs> so difficult now how to run the kingdom. There is no budget. Huh? <laughs> nothing left in the store. Is I empty. <laughs> Clothes, foods, jewelry, whatever, give away. Then the king and minister discuss, you know, <laughs> oh, what to do now. Then they decided. It's completely different than now, okay. <laughs> what India we have now, that time, many, many different kingdoms, okay, more than 300 kingdoms. What Nepal we have now, that time maybe. <laughs> around 30 different countries. Only Kathmandu is a three kingdom, you know. <laughs> Later, come together, yeah? In that time, I think, uh, many bodhisattvas, vidyadharas, uh, they go to another uh, continent, like, crossing the ocean and get the jewels and sell, you know, and then like build the temples, feed the monks. That time we find the story like great bodhisattvas to serve the Buddha Dharma, you know. They go to uh, in the ocean to get the jewels and sell, you know. So they decided, okay, we go to get the jewels. If we get the jewels, we can sell, we can make business, and we can run the country. Then uh, Minister Tishnazin, when he was coming back, after getting jewels. So he thought, oh, I should pick up some flowers, you know, to make offering to the three jewels. Kind of like coincidence, you know. <coughs> so when he was going to pick up flowers, first he saw to Gurumbuja, you know, on the lotus flower, you know, very young boy surrounding with a lot of wisdom darkness, teaching the Dharma. And he thought, oh, our king doesn't have son, you know. If we take this to palace, we can make him, you know, prince, you know. <laughs> and he goes to tell to the king Indravodi, I saw that kind of something different boy in the <laughs> lake, lake, you know, <laughs> on the lotus flower. Then uh, they brought to the palace and made him like a prince, you know. Uh, he doesn't have vision, you know, eyes. He's blind, King Indarbodhi. So he was, his dialogue like. <laughs> uh, I don't have son you know, who can help me in this life. I don't have practice of the Dharma, which can help me in next life, you know. <laughs> uh, 
I cannot see anything. I don't have the vision, you know. How pity, how sad I am, you know. But when he get the Guru Rinpoche, he can see, you know. And all his storage fill up with the jewels, you know, naturally, because of the blessings of the Guru Rinpoche. So, Guru Rinpoche become the prince of the Odiana. Then later, Pajasatova give him protection, yeah? that you are not for this purpose, you know, means become like a prince, enjoy the materialism, you know, as I'm sorry, old, you are Buddha's son, so it is time to renounce. When Bajrasattva gives him prediction, then Guru Mbache go away from the palace to practice in the charnel grounds and having many, many wisdom doctrines give him teachings. And then we don't exactly know how many places all over the India, you know, uh, that time, many, many different countries traveled, you know. As I said, Guru Mbuchi doesn't need actually go to forest and to make meditation, you know. He's Buddha from the birth. But just to set the example, if someone likes to practice Buddha Dharma in order to uh, enlighten men, and this is the way, you know, so. And finally, I think time came that Mandarawa can see Guru Rinpoche. Huh? Uh, Mandarawa is a princess of the reversal in North India now. That time, different kingdom. And Mandarawa is really also different, you know. She was something different than normal girl. Uh, grow up very quickly and completely different attractive, you know. <laughs> and came many, many kings asking to marry. And she rejected, you know, she doesn't want to marry. Uh, she's requesting um, father and mother, king and queen that this human life is a very short. It is impermanent. No meaning to waste the life. No matter which king I marry, there will be full of suffering. No ultimate peace and happiness and joy. So instead of that, if I get chance to practice the Dharma, I will appreciate, you know, she's asking, asking, asking. Many, many different kings come to marry and she reject. And then finally, King Tsukladzin, in Tibetan translated, uh, this, uh, you know, place called Mandi in Himachal Pradesh, in North India. Now it's a small city, one district, before one kingdom. <laughs> And this king finally decided, if you really don't want to marry, if you really wish to practice Dharma, then I will send you to the temple, you know, like. And with 500 another girls accompanied to her, you know, because he's king, huh? so she will not feel boring, you know. <laughs> Kempu from Sahor, you go there and practice. She received the teachings from the Kempu of, from Sahor and practicing in the forest. Then Kurumbuche flying in the sky, she saw, you know, she feels this is something different, you know, because he is Buddha. Maybe karmic connection, actually all the 
five concerts of the Guru Rinpoche is not like a normal goal, okay? They all are reincarnate. Uh, that's just kind of drama showing us. But in reality, they all are Dakinis, huh? So Mandela was shocked, you know. Something different in the sky. <laughs> when Guru Rinpoche came down and she invited insight and receiving teachings. She knows she's Buddha. And Buddha Guru Rinpoche knows she's not normal, she's Dakini. But the rumors, you know, wow, the Princess Mandara, you know, never married with many different kings, came here, and now she's with uh, someone. <laughs> So king got angry. Huh? I told her, marry this king, that king. She said, practice Dharma, and now <laughs> she's with some funny guy. You know? <laughs> they don't know who is Guru Mbuche, huh? <laughs> Oh, she break the rule, you know. So I should punish now. <laughs> then they burn Guru Mbuche alive with sandalwood, you know, very <laughs> strong fire. <laughs> and um, Mandarawa, they put in the uh, earth, you know, dig the earth and put, you know, uh, and planted many trees on that, <laughs> saying that she should not listen any male voice till 25 years, you know, <laughs> punishment. No chance to see physically, should not hear any male voice till 25 years, that's punishment. <laughs> Didn't marry and now doing something wrong. <laughs> then they put the fire and <laughs> went back to the palace. But many Buddhas, Bodhisattva was darkness, <laughs> may rain, and the fire transformed into the lake. Rivers, are, we go to pilgrimage now, yeah? Then that's what Guru Mbuchi, the fire transformed into Lotus Lake. Tsopema, Tsopema, you know? Tsopema is a, a lotus flower lake. Fire transformed into water, and on the lotus flower, you know. I think they used to burn alive people, you know, but they say, generally, uh, the longest, three days they can see the smoke, you know, still not yet finished. <laughs> but no more smoke or fire after three days. But in four days, when someone Um, went to see there and uh, no, yeah, like three days longest is three days they have fire and smoke when they burn the alive people, you know, like punishment. <laughs> but this time, just maybe next day there is no smoke and no fire, you know. Oh, generally there should be three days fire, you know, and smoke. Why? Then someone went to see. No fire is a lake on the lotus flower, Guru Rinpoche, and then told the king he didn't die. <laughs> they went to see. Then finally, the king of Rival, sir, father of Mandarawa, was shocked. Oh, you are Buddha. What did I do, you know? <laughs> so he offered Mandarawa to Guru Rinpoche. And, uh, Guru Mbuche's hat, actually king, king's hat, you know, and he offered all the, his best dresses, best hat to Guru Mbuche to excuse, I'm sorry, I did wrong. <laughs> and Guru Mbuche and Mandara fly to Marutika to practice the long life and Amitayu Buddha appear and give the long life empowerment. So 
Kurumshi no need to die, huh? as well Mandara. They are immortality. So there are even in India many places like uh, Sikkim and a little part of the Assam, Arunachal Pradesh, you know, like Bayul. Bayul, Bayul is a sacred holy land of Guru Mbushi, you know, Bayul. There are different accounts, but mainly seven Bayul. Guru Mbushi, blessed holy place, you know, like a holy place and secret holy place is different. Like a Buddha Gaya is one of the most important holy places, huh? Buddha enlightened. is holy place, not the secret holy place. Like a Sikkim, as well my birthplace, Yomo, in Nepal 3 and Bhutan, you know. That's Guru Mbuchi's secret holy place. Quite important. We should know because Buddha said in the teachings, practicing one day in holy place, you will have more accumulation of merit than practicing one year in normal place. That's Buddha's teaching, okay? So, Sacred Holy Land is a very important for practitioners to, to have right place to practice, you know. So Guru Mbuchi has many, many holy places in India, Nepal, Bhutan, Tibet, almost all of Tibet is a Guru Mbuchi's holy place, you know. There are some hard spots, you know, like, but there are all the land of snow, Tibet. It says Guru Mbuchi set food, you know, <laughs> to bliss. It does not mean that, like us, we need to work, you know, or have to buy the visa or flight, you know. Miraculously, they can place all places, you know, in the meditation. One country, in a few minutes, they can place, okay, because it's out of our reach. So, first human concert of Guru Mbuche is Mandarawa. Guru Tuksu Chumbi Pimenga. Actually, there are five Takinis, uh, human Guru Mbuche's consort. Uh, Guru Mbuche came to Nepal with Mandarawa, but later, when Guru Mbuche was living in Nepal, there are two consorts. One is a princess, Palmu Shakyadeva. Palmu is Newari, Newari, a, a group or community. You know. Palmu Shakyadeva is a princess. When Guru Mbuche was in Nepal, most of the time she's with Guru Mbuche. That's the second. And third one is a, uh, from Nepal, Palpang Kala city. Palpang means she's daughter of the public, okay, not the princess, also Guru Mbuchi's consort, two from Nepal. In Kathmandu city, Patan, uh, there is a temple built by Palmu Shagyadeva, the princess. And in Nepal, Guru Mbuchi lived longest time in that temple, because that was a uh, temple and Guru Mbuchi's library still exists there, we can visit there, but we don't see books and these things, you know, like a long time ago, huh? but the place still exists now. A Tuklakhan, in the teachings it says, A Temple, you know, and Nepalese call different names now, but in the Buddhist Guru Mbuchi's teaching it comes like A Temple. So that's built by Shakya Deva. The second Guru Mbuchi's concert. And Nepal, I think Guru Mbuchi visited 
not only one time. Uh, I think few times. Uh, many many places there. Gurumbhish's cave, Gurumbhish's holy place uh, in Nepal. Yeah? Then from Nepal, Gurumbhish went to Bhutan. Uh, King of Bhutan, that time, so, King Sindhu Raja got problem, you know, with the fighting with different kingdom, and then his son, the prince, got killed on the war, and he got very bad disease. So invited Guru Mbuche. get well from the sickness and have peaceful in the country. <laughs> from Parping, Yanglishu, I think if you travel there, Yanglishu is Guru Mbuche's holy place near Kathmandu city. So from there, Guru Mbuche went to Bhutan. Bhutan people say, oh, Guru Mbuche came here, we have lots of Guru Mbuche's holy place. They never have <laughs> proof they didn't know. When we were playing this Guru Mbuche live story drama, we don't get the account, you know, from where Guru Mbuche went to Bhutan, you know, from where? I talked all our senior Kenjin Rinpoche, no one knows. Trying to find, read many books, cannot find. We went to holiness. I still remember very fresh, you know. <laughs> and holiness in Kambai style, you know. Me and our drama director, other one or two campos. Uh, holiness always used to say in Tibet, Gariko. What do you want? You know, directly. <laughs> and I supposed to speak. <laughs> I used to go often to see holiness, you know. I said, oh, Rumbuche, we got problem, you know. We don't know from where Gurumbuche go to Bhutan. No accounts we find, you know. And holiness. Okay, from Yang Lishi. He's Buddha, okay, holiness. Okay, from Yang Lishi. We did. We didn't have any account, you know, we did that. Bhutan has Dharma history, you know, like uh, how Buddhism came there, which great master came there. No details about the Guru Mbuche from where. We don't know anyone. But after many, many years, Holiness passed away already. I was in Shimla, North India, receiving some more teachings from Holiness Takunse you know. Then there was one teaching, you know. Sikdun uh, Sabdu means Profan seven line practice is a test of teachings discovered by uh, Wigen Tililingpa. He has few names. One is Abum Terchen. Abum Terchen. So when I was receiving these teachings from, and it teachings explain very clearly, you know, the 
people from Bhutan came to Yang Lishu to requesting Guru Rinpoche, you know, inviting go to Bhutan. So me shocked, you know. <laughs> I exactly remember, you know, what Holiness said, you know. What do you want, you know? And, you know we, Rinpoche, we don't know from where to go to Bhutan, Guru Rinpoche. Okay, from young this year, you know, he did like that. I got problem that time I went to see him. <laughs> so from young this year, Guru Mbuche went to Bhutan and Guru Mbuche blazed the king of Bhutan, Sindurasa. He got well from the disease and received the teachings. Then he offered his daughter to Guru Mbuche. That's the fourth Guru Mbuche council, you know. Menmo Tashikyotun. Her name is Menmo Tashikyotun. So Bhutan has many Guru Mbuche's holy places, you know. How he traveled there. <clears throat> That's fourth Guru Mbuche's council. And Nepal came, I think, few times. Finally, when Guru Mbuche went to Tibet, also from went to Nepal, through Nepal. Why Guru Mbuche went to Tibet, you know, like, I think his most activities, I think, in Tibet. Um, because we are just normal person, you know, <laughs> we don't have the wisdom, we cannot see all his activities. But mm -hmm. what accounts, what is true, we have now, it's, it seems like more in Tibet, you know, like, like all the treasure teachings, you know. He taught there, he put in the treasure teachings, you know, lots of activities in Tibet. And like the main history, Guru Mbuche came out from Amitabha Buddha's heart, huh? Amitabha Buddha's heart emanation. But many different stories, okay? In one history, it's written by Guru Mbuche. It's the Tezu teachings about the history of the Baudanath Stupa. In Kathmandu, we have a Three great stupas, huh? uh, Swain Bunadi stupa, Baudanadi stupa, Namu Buddha stupa, you know. That's the three main famous stupa in Nepal. But Baudanadi stupa is also associated with Guru Mbuche. In that history, not Shakyamuni Buddha's time, the previous Buddha Kashapa time. Um, one woman called Chatsima, who takes care about the chicken, you know. <laughs> Chatsima means the woman who takes care of the chicken. She built that stupa. How um, she had four, four sons from different husbands. Mm. One son is from the guy who takes care of the horse, Tadzi. And the second who takes care of the Chatsi chicken, you know. And third, uh, Tadzi, Chatsi, Pakzi, who takes care of all the, who look after the pigs, you know. Tadzi, Chatsi, Pakzi, Kizi, the fourth who look after the dogs, you know. So she had four different husbands, four, dif four sons, and she has little money. So she thought, oh, I should do something good things, you know, with this money. <laughs> and she also not actually normal woman, okay. That's how she display her. Who build that Baudanadi stupa <laughs> is not something normal. Huh? So 
So she went to ask the king, you know, permission. I want to build small stupa. Can you allow me to have the land, you know? Then king asked, how big, how big stupa you want to build? In our Tibetan way now, like measuring, you know, like two legs put like this, then under this our two feet, huh? whatever skin cover, go at Domkang, we say the skin under two feet, you know, is like maybe a little bit more than meter, you know, like around. I need that much land, she asked. King thought, oh, she's going to build <laughs> small is to go. Okay, go ahead, you know, no problem. When she came back, she measured the skin, round skin, from this feet to that feet, maybe more than maybe meter or one and a half meters. Then she cut very tiny way, you know, <laughs> making like a thread. You know, long, then it goes very long. Huh? <laughs> then she measured that way, you know, and starting to digging the foundation to build the stupa. People saw, wow, one woman is building this big stupa. If we let her to do, then later, if king wants to build stupa or ministers wants to build stupa, must be bigger than this, huh? normal woman. We cannot do that. So better stop, you know. <laughs> they went to king. Oh, king, that woman is doing a really bad thing, you know, building a lot, big stupa. If you allow her, and then if we need to build king's stupa, how much we should build, huh? Better stop, you know. King said, call her, you know. You ask, you know, uh, under the two legs, skin size, and now you, I heard you are building up very big stupa. What did you do, you know? And she said, I have only same size of the skin, you know, but I just cut it, you know. <laughs> made it long and you ordered me to have that you know so king nothing to say now because king's mouth you know <laughs> cannot change the order huh? so we call like in tibetan jarum kashor jarum kashor means you know give the words can do the literally translation, charum kashur means give the words, can do, you know. So king cannot change his order, okay. Okay, go ahead, you know. <laughs> so she had four sons. The oldest one, the previous life of King Chisong Dezin. Tibet Dharma King Chisong Dezin. The second one, second son, is the previous life of Kembu Shanti Rakshita. The third son is previous, previous life of Guru Mbuche. And fourth one is a previous life of Basalang. Basalang is a King Chisong Dechen's Dharma minister. So she has four sons, one servant, and uh, one ox who can carry the stone and mud to build the stupa. You know. Then when stupa almost done, you know, up to the neck, the mother died. Ma Chatsima, you know. Mom Chatsima died, you know. She wasn't able to complete the stupa. That's not this kalpa, okay, that's during the previous Buddha's time, Buddha, third Buddha's time, this is fourth Buddha, okay, Shakyamuni. Among the thousand, Shakyamuni is fourth. Fifth is a Maitreya, you know, Maitreya Bodhisattva will be the fifth Buddha. And thousand, the last one is a 
Dinjom Rambuchi will be the last one, you know. Sanki me patai, Dinjom Rambuchi will in Latin as a Buddha me patai, you know. So, this is true, not the, during the Shakyamuni Buddha's time. Third Buddha's time, his fourth Buddha, you know, long. We cannot calculate the human years, okay? When she passed away, then the poor son told, you know, our mother did a great job, but she wasn't able to complete this. We must complete it, you know, fulfill her wishes. Then the four sons uh, completed the stupa, Bodhanati stupa. And then the dedication, the prayer they made that the eldest son prayed that I must be born as a Dharma king in the future so I can. Uh, start the Buddha Dharma. Far away, where is no Dharma exists, you know. Thakop, Thakop is kind of like a remote area. They are thinking about the Tibet, okay. And then after a long time, the oldest son of that mom, born as a King Tisong Deozin. King Tisong Deozin is a uh, reincarnation of Manjushiri, okay? Like uh, even you read the Buddha's life story, you know, five pure, 500 pure lifetimes, 500 impure lifetimes means they took birth in different situations, in different places, in different forms. Even Buddha have that kind of history. Similarly, Guru Mbuche, one way we say, came out from Amitabha's heart, but in another history, and this history is a test of teachings taught by Guru Mbache, okay? Uh, Shakya Zambu discovered these teachings. History of the Bhavadanath Stupa, taught by or written by Guru Mbache, yeah? But in this history it says, long back ago Guru Mbache was son of this mother who built the Bhavadanath Stupa, okay? So, all this son pray that by this marriage, you know, building this stupa, may I born as a Dharma king so I can take the Buddha Dharma in this darkness place, you know. Then the second brother pray or dedicate by this marriage. May I born as a, a Kempo Bodhisattva, you know, as a Bodhisattva Kempo. Because he heard, you know, my elder brother wants to be Dharma king, then he must have the teacher huh? <laughs> who can teach, you know. So I born as a Kempo Changju Semba, the Kempo Bodhisattva. Then third one, oh, he wants to be king, he wants to be Kempo. They want to uh, spread the Buddha Dharma. Then there must be obstacles, you know. They may have difficulties, you know. So I should be powerful tantric master. So I can dispel all the obstacles. So my brothers wish can fulfill, you know. Then the third one, born as a Guru Mbuchi. Then fourth one, you know, listening who, what wants to be, huh? oh, one is king, another is a Kempo, and one is a powerful Tantric master, and they want to Dharma work. They want to do Dharma work in one place. But what guarantee this all three will born one place and they will work together, you know. Maybe one is here, one is somewhere else. Mm -hmm. So I must be born as a messenger who can bring them all together in one place so they can do. So 
Then during the King Tisong there was in the youngest son born Minister Basangang who came to invite Guru Mbuche and Kembu Shanti Rakshita from Nepal to Tibet, you know. So four sons pray like that way. Mom already passed away. Then one crow, Charola Kari, crow, Marie, crow, bird, you know, black bird, crow, was sitting on the tip of the top of the stupa, you know. And they had one ox huh, who was carrying stone, mud, water, you know, listening, you know, what these people are talking, you know. The ox got angry, oh, they are human, they can pray, but they didn't pray for me, you know. I carry all the stone and water and mud, they don't pray anything for me. I'm not human, you know, I cannot pray like that. So ox got angry and made wrong prayer, you know. I carried all the materials, built this stupa, they didn't pray for me. So when they come together and trying to spread the Buddha Dharma, I will destroy all the Dharma, you know. <laughs> and this ox born King Lang Dharma, King Lang Dharma, who destroyed the old um, North of Vajrayana, Vinaya lineage in Tibet, you know, kill all the monks and nuns and chase out, you know. Uh, maybe after five generations from King Chisong Deosin, then he was the king, huh? King Lantarma. First he built a few temples, then he got mad, then he trying to kill all the monks and nuns or chasing out or destroying all the temples. When this ox made wrong aspiration, then the crowd understand, oh, all the prayers what we made in front of this stupa will come true. So, Crowd thought, you know, even this ox prayer also will come true, you know. He will be powerful guy who will destroy the Dharma in Tibet, you know. Then Crow prayed when he became that kind of kind of demon, you know. I must be powerful tantric practitioner so I can live I can liberate him, you know. Means I can finish him, you know. <laughs> then because of the prayer, what they made in Bhaudanadi Stupa, is the like cause that getting Buddha Dharma in Tibet even stronger than India, yeah? Because this all prayers come true. Guru Mbuche born a long time ago, you know, like when Guru Mbuche was going to Tibet, he has been like a 1,500 years already. <laughs> and then Kempu Shanti Rakshita, when we make his statue, we put only one teeth, you know. Means how long he lived, you know, too old, you know. <laughs> That's why in his statue, we put only one teeth. <laughs> So he born, Kempushanti Rakshita born maybe, uh, before then, around 600 years, you know, like before then, Chisong Dezen, you know. He was coming to Nepal, listening, is Chisong Dezen is already born or no, or no, go back to India, again coming to Nepal, <laughs> trying to, you know, that way, back and forth. So finally, Chisong Dev was born. He's a not normal guy also, huh? because he's king, uh, 
reincarnation of the Manjushri. So age of 13, he became the king, king of the Tibet. He's the one who invited Guru Rinpoche, Shantirakshita. Before he invited Kempo Shantirakshita, went to Tibet, built the temple and kept the teachings, you know, how to avoid ten negative actions, how to practice the ten virtues. Then the non-human evil spirit of Tibet made problems, you know, like a big, big rains, floods, you know, so many obstacles. And Tisong Dev then asked to Kembu Shandirakshita, it seems like my wish cannot be fulfilled, you know. I want to really have the Buddha Dharma, but seems like a lots of obstacle here. So what to do? Then Kembu Shandirakshita give the prediction to King Tisong Dev and you know that saying, I'm a Bodhisattva. Perform all the actions peacefully. But non human spirit, evil spirit in Tibet looks quite strong, you know. <laughs> so you must be invite Guru Padma Sambhava. He is the most powerful Buddha on the planet. If he comes, he can clean away everything, these problems. So we can have the Buddha Dharma in Tibet. Then Tisong Devsen, King Tisong Devsen, is, is it possible to invite him, you know? Will he come, you know? Where is he? I don't know. Then Shantirakshita explained him. Long back ago, during the Buddha Kashapa's time, we built the stupa, we were all brothers. We pray. So now time came. If you send the messengers, Guru Mbushi will come. We can have the Buddha Dharma in Tibet. Then Chisong Dilsen invited Guru Rinpoche in Tibet. Buddha Dharma started Tibet before Guru Mbushi, yeah, during the King Songsen Kampu, who is reincarnation of Avalokiteshwara, I think it's a uh, beginning of the seventh century, started send the Tumisambuddha India to study all the spellings, grammars, you know. Devanagari is a uh, Indian writings, came back to Tibet and then uh, founded the Tibetan Alvabhat, you know, and translated some teachings, but mainly um, some Vajrayanas and some Bodhisattvas, but they didn't have uh, Binaya traditions, monks and nuns. And when you say Buddha Dharma, Mainly it is Binaya tradition, okay? Where is a Binaya tradition? There is a Buddha Dharma. Where is no Binaya tradition? Still, maybe there are powerful practitioners. Uh, we don't talk about Buddha Dharma is exists or not there, you know. When we say Buddha Dharma exists or not, mainly in is the Binaya traditions. So during the King Songzen Kampus time, you know, like upasaka or upasika means uh, five household vows, you know. Both male and female can have that and practicing Buddhism on the basis of that, you know, not the, like monks and nuns. And 8th century, Guru Mbuchi came, Kenshin, Kembushan Dirakshita from Nalanda Institute, you know. So Kembushan Dirakshita who started having Binaya, you know, like monks, 
nuns later, mainly monks that time. So Kempushan Dirakshita is the main teacher of the like Binaya and Sutra, these things, you know. Then uh, Guru Rinpoche gives more Tantra teachings, Vajrayana teachings. And Bimala Mitra is the main Dzogchen master, uh, came from Nalinda University, you know, from India. So Yishi Chokil is a Chisong Dev Chen's wife. That's fifth consort of Guru Mbuchi. When Chisong Dev Chen was receiving empowerment, especially high level of empowerment, he offered his wife as an offering of the mandala to Guru Mbuchi. It does not mean that Chisong Dizin didn't have kada to offer Guru Mbuchi. So offer to Yishizaki, he was king, huh? he has gold, silver, whatever he wanted he can offer. But he was telling us how important Vajrayana empowerments, you know, that he can offer his wife, you know. And Ishi Sogyal is also not normal, actually, woman, you know, just only Chisong Dez and the wife, no. <laughs> like Ishi Sogyal mean, they all are great, great bodhisattvas, takinis, you know, wisdom holder. They are just <laughs> making drama us to understand, <laughs> showing us, you know. That's the fifth dakini of Guru Mbuche, consort of the Guru Mbuche. But when we build the stupa, you know, like, like Buddha and Shariputra Mughal, like Guru Mbuche, Mandarawa and Ishi Sokil, you know, right side Mandarawa, she is the first one, the left side is Ishi Sokil. Those two are more popular, I think, among the five. Two Nepalese, one Bhutanese. Eh, not that much in public. I, I don't see any statue of them. In, <laughs> in some accounts, Ishi Sokil is the reincarnation Mandarawa. They are same heart, you know, same mind. In Nepal, uh, we have a story, Mandarawa came there, but Tibet publicly not that much history, but when the time of Guru Mbuchi leaving from Tibet, then one day people saw, you know, oh, Mandarawa also presence there around Guru Mbuchi, you know, because they are wisdom dakini, okay? They can come to show us, they can disappear, whatever they want, they can do, you know. Not like us, you know. We, we, like I'm here now, means I'm only here, I'm not in New York, okay. <laughs> Tomorrow I go New York, then I'm only New York, I'm not in KPC. <laughs> we have not that power, you know. But Buddhas and Bodhisattvas, Dakinis, in one single time, they can display hundred different places, different activities. It is not our reach. So just leaving Guru Mbuche from Tibet before, and in one day, people saw even Mandarawa also, you know, <laughs> around Guru Mbuche. And Mandarawa comes more in our history because all the desert teachings, you know, uh, written down by her. In the West, different, in the East, like husband goes for work, get money and come back and give to the wife, and wife will put in the box and put the lock, you know. 
here both men and women both can make money. Now similar little bit in, in the East, but before, you know, women just in the house working. <laughs> men makes money and give to the wife and wife take care. <laughs> similar example, okay. Guru Mbiji gives lots of teaching and Mendarao who writing down everything, you know, take care. <clears throat> and Guru Mbiji, his 25 main disciples during his time, huh? lots of students, but main 25, huh? they're 25 all are accomplished one. Che Pang Doksun, King, Friend, and Public. King is King Tisong Deozen. Friend is a Kurumbuchi's life partner, Ishizoko. And Public, 23, like a Berochana and so forth, you know. Uh, but Ishizoko has to do lots of work, you know, all oh, the Kurumbuchi's teachings written down in Dakinese language and put in different places, you know. So that's why I think she comes more in lineage because we Nyingma uh, practices more Teza teachings here. Yeah? And most of Teza teachings, lineage has to come through Ishisogela, Guru Mbuche Ishisogela and Teza Rivela. Guru Mbuche Ishisogela and Teza Rivela. So everywhere we see Isi Sogya, Isi Sogya, Isi Sogya. Bhutan is one, two Nepal is one. Don't see much there. <laughs> there are history. Hacham Menda Rawa Tang, Palmu Shakya Dewa Tang, Palwa Kala Siti Tang, Memo Trashi Kyojun Tang, Kandru Isi Sogya. Guru Tuksu Jumbi Puminga in Pema Khan, Guru Mujis Life Series. There are five women who was very close with Guru Mbishi's heart, you know. <laughs> it's not like same as, okay, they are <laughs> Buddha or <all that. clears throat> So Guru Mbishi gives a lot of teachings everywhere but mainly in Tibet because long time huh? it's not the same accounts there are many different interpretations some says only six months some says only four years you know six years but uh, majority is 64 years in Tibet <clears throat> build the Sambia monastery placed you know and translated many, many teachings in Tibetan. So Buddhism, mainly from India, as well as China, as well from Nepal, went to Tibet. The common Buddhist teachings. But there are many, many teachings. Guru Rinpoche and Bimala Mitra took from the Pure Land and directly translated in, into Tibetan. So the Buddhism how much it was spread in Tibet, not in, even in India, you know. Because not all from, proud from India, directly from Pure Land, you know, like Guru Rinpoche, Bimala Mitra, Berochana. Because they all are Buddha and Bodhisattvas, not have to bring from somewhere from the corner of the India, you know. It's manly from there. <clears throat> then finally, Guru Mbuchi left the Tibet. Ah. Like a Rakshas place, means demon's place, huh? Lonup Simbiyul, uh, south and west, demon's place. 
if Guru Mbuchi don't go there, if Guru Mbuchi doesn't control the demons, they come to human world and they will eat all of us. So to save the human beings in the world, Guru Mbuchi went to demons' place and liberated the king of demon, and he became the king of their, you know, outside. Inside is still Guru Mbuchi. But outside, he represents like king of demons to control all of the demons, you know. Uh, finally, then Tisong Dejin died before Guru Mbuchi leaving from Tibet and as well Kembu Shantirakshita. So during the King Monizimbu, the son of Tisong Dejin, then Guru Mbuchi like many days, walking from there is no road, you know, that, that, that time, from the Lhasa to Mangyul Kung Tang. Mangyul Kung Tang is a far west of Tibet, close to Nepal. There is a, like a mountain, Berochana, Ishichokyal, Muni Tsenbu, they all, many, many Tibetans, went with Guru Mbuche up to that point, and then Guru Mbuche flew from there, to the copper colored mountain, huh? that's outer way of showing. But secretly, Guru Mbuchi is a wisdom body. So, as he said, Nangri Kungri Pöki Dunla Chun Nisir Chati Dangla Chip Dijun. Every single evening and morning, I will come back to Tibet. Take care of you people, you know. Guru Mbuchi said that in his teaching, especially early morning, you know, sun rays. So he said, I will travel on sun rays, you know, <laughs> like we take train. Huh? And he are not sechu di sungo sechu, especially the tenth day. Guru Mbuchi said, "I will definitely come in front of all of you who has the faith and pray me. You know, we don't see from our eyes, but if we really pray from the heart, Guru Mbuchi will be there. He doesn't need visa and flight. You know." <laughs> Like me, difficult to go some places, cannot get the visa, you know. He doesn't need the visa. <laughs> so that's why, 10th day, we are practicing Guru Mbuchi. That's his promise, you know. He says, I will definitely come on the 10th day morning. If you practice me, if you follow me. <laughs> I'm just talking very briefly. Huh? <laughs> Even in all our life, cannot express Guru Mbuchi's life story is that 10,000 books cannot even read. <laughs> if you are not fast reading, cannot read, you know, we will not even find all those books. You know. <laughs> so Guru Mbuchi is the Buddha from the world, okay? And not only Buddha, Shakyamuni Buddha said that he is superior than us because of the five reasons so if we really understand, we believe that, that's the most important. Because you have faith, you have belief, you pray from the heart, you will get the blessings of the Guru Mbuchi, no doubt. So that's important, you know. Guru Mbuchi said, Nga drup sangye tamji drup, nga tong sangye tamji tong in Tibetan Horsa. It means if you practice Guru Mbuchi, it means you are practicing all the Buddhas. And then if you can see me, you see all the Buddhas, you know. So that's our Buddha. I think we did something good job in the previous lives. We were able to see great Yingma masters. We were fortunate to receive Guru Mbuchi's teaching, you know. We have opportunity to practice the Guru Mbuchi's teaching, you know. So that's we are very fortunate.
And life is impermanent. <laughs> we don't know how long. I'm planning to go to tomorrow, New York. There's no guarantee I will reach New York. Okay, I may. No guarantee, huh? So, when we have time, we really need to practice the Buddha Dharma. Everything we will leave here, no matter what you have, who you are, the time of death, everything is useless, meaningless. Only good karma and bad karma will go with our mind. That's it. Yeah? Nothing can tag. We used to say, you know, ah, why I need to worry, you know? I came empty-handed. Go empty-handed from here. <laughs> empty-handed will not go. And will burn somewhere here or, or put under somewhere. Ah, they, you know, just only mind will go. Body will burn here, you know. We had previous life. We died there, you know, no matter in which realms, you know, animals or hell, hungry ghost, left that body there. Only the consciousness entered into mother womb and we took this body from mother wombs. Huh? We think like, oh, Oh, I was similar like this, you know, when I was born. I can walk, I can speak, I can enjoy, you know, I can... We were not like that. That's our confusion. We don't know what is good, what is bad. We don't know what is water, what is fire, you know. So, that's the mom who raised us, yeah? Oh walk like this way, eat like this way, everything mom taught us, we don't know anything. And we didn't have this kind of big body, eh? tiny, this, this small, maybe a few kilos. <laughs> eat, eat, drink, drink, now become like that. <laughs> so this body, we grow from mother womb. The something which you brought from someone will not have with you forever. You need to return sometime. Huh? Mm -hmm. So similarly, we are carrying this my body, my body. Oh, I'm hungry, I'm thirsty, I'm cold, I'm hot, hot. Can you turn on AC, this and that? Everything is for this body. But in one day, we'll leave this only mine consciousness go out from this body. Teaching says this body is like a hotel's room. The mind inside is the guest staying in the hotel. The hotel room, you have few days, you know, it will not have whole life. Someday you will travel another place and leave the room, hotel room. Similarly, this body will leave behind. Only consciousness goes. So what you can take, whether you did good job here, good karma, or whatever you make mistake, you know, negative karma, no choice. You have to carry that. You cannot say, oh, my negative karma, uncle you bring, auntie you bring later, I will take some more merits, even yours, you know cannot do that. You cannot leave your negative karma here. Another people's positive karma you cannot borrow, not lend, not steal, cannot do, no way. So that's why just eat enough food, wear enough dress, just cover the body. You need to save the body, why? You need this to practice the Dharma. But it does not mean that everything give for this body, you know, face, ears, neck, place. <laughs> then one day, no use, huh? Mind will go out from the body, body will useless. So, teaching says, ah, 
if you are lucky, do good job, this body will help you go to the nice place. And you do wrong things because of this body, yeah? and then go to the hell also because of this body. Because why we are running here and there, not sleeping enough time at the night, not eating even on time, running, 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 mostly us. To collect some things, huh? Why? Oh, I need to eat, I need to drink, I need to dress, I need to have a room, you know? Everything is we do for this body, you know? <laughs> but this body, if you don't use for Dharma purpose, no point. Doesn't help. Ah. So this point of view, samsara, you know samsara? The word of samsara. My samsara is this my body. And his samsara is his body. Her samsara is her body. Ah, tungal korwa chen pumpus. Teaching says, you know, samsara, samsara. This body is samsara. As long as we carry this body, which is the result of the samsari karma, Till that we have suffering, okay? Hunger, thirst, heat, cold, you know. All the sufferings because of this body. Um, so we should not waste all our 24 hours a day just to please this body then. We will have be closed at the time of death, then our calculation is a fail. <laughs> no matter how much you collect, just leave behind, you know. It is not helpful then. So, like monks and nuns, no need to say, even household people, you know, little different culture, okay. In our place, parents always trying to store, collect more, and for my son, for my daughter, you know. We don't know our son and da daughter will really think us when we go, you know. No guarantee. No guarantee then they do something good for us, after us, you know, like a son and daughter, you know. Some may, if they are associated with Dharma, oh, my father passed away, oh, my mother passed away, I need to go to some holy place, make some pujas, I need to see some teachers, you know, asking some prayers, you know. But if son and daughter is not that very close with the Dharma, if they are not Dharma way of thinking, sometimes they scold, you know, oh, I went to bank, there's no balance much. They didn't leave me anything, you know. <laughs> will not say, oh, my father and my mother. So, but different culture in the West. So, um, so, we met Buddha Dharma. There are many different traditions, uh, lineages. Among them, we were fortunate to practice the Guru Mbuche's teachings. So it's most important that we spend time for the Dharma. So that's, the, I think, a good thing to do. So we will not be much problems during the time of death. That's why we are practicing, okay, I have peaceful death. After death, 49 days, intermediate states, I won't have much problems. And then, after 49 days, wherever I born, I again see the gurus, 
receive the teachings, again practice the Buddha Dharma, and slowly, slowly, in after a few lifetimes, I may get enlightened, you know. That's our expectation. So, we are practicing Dharma for that. Not that I practice Dharma, then I get lots of money. People me will say me I'm a practitioner, you know. That's not our expectation. Ah, so I just spoke whatever I remember yesterday and today. Few little things with my baby English. <laughs> I wish, I hope. Maybe you understood this. <laughs> and so Time is impermanent now, gone. <laughs> uh, thank you, KBC community, Kembu Pemotsering, giving me opportunity to speak two nights here. Thank you so much, because this is Jejunma Center, and this is the place where holiness placed many times, you know. He's my root teacher, so where you are, I get chance to service the Dharma. I feel unfortunate, <laughs> remembering kindness of the holiness, you know. So, thank you so much for giving me this opportunity to speaking about little bit about the Dharma and Guru Rinpoche, okay? So we finish now here, okay? Thank you so much. Mm. Uh, on behalf of Jetson and KBC, thank Plus. you so much for the show. Thank you. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Unzonam da hitam jetze bane, tu bene pedra namba jeshi. Ke gana jiba la druba yi se bezo le drawa drawa shur Rinjenga suta yi drawa ku Tadu nam beja dhamma drashin Ranzen do ni azo pata jene Jungan dam beja den ze bar shur Sange dam bata shin ye bar shur Sandan Tanjet, Shin Kiparshot, Nedan Sandu Chula Chuparshot, Ranjan Juni Guni Truparshot, Kewa Kundu Yanda Klamadon, Drumetu Kiparla Lonjuchi, Sadalongi Yundan Mazone. Doje Changje Gyobanyo Tobjo. By this effort, may all sentient beings be free of suffering. May their minds be filled with the nectar of virtue. In this way, may all causes resulting in suffering be extinguished and only the light of compassion shine throughout our realms. Thank you.